Tinker's Lodge. We're in the metal room again. Um, and a great group of people. We've got, um, I think, 14, 16 in the room right now. So it's a smaller okay. number than last year, but we've got a great group. Um, a uh -huh. lot of good broad spectrum with a lot of background knowledge about climate change to begin with. So we're going to hit the ground running in the morning, I think. Good. But of course, we're dying to hear about um, what's been happening with Drawdown. Okay, so for those of you who haven't heard of uh, Project Drawdown in the past, or even know what Drawdown is as a concept, um, Drawdown is really um, a new way of thinking about uh, and acting on global warming. Um, it's, it's about a goal for a future that we actually want to achieve, uh, a, a, a future where reversing global warming is possible. Um, and it's a goal that takes these, it goes beyond what the current paradigm is around climate, um, which you heard from Adam, no doubt, about the two degrees, 1.5 degrees targets, and actually where we are headed uh, currently with the commitments already uh, made, which is not even reaching the two degrees. What we try to say at Drawdown and think about is how we can uh, redefine what that goal is for humanity to make it something that is eminently sensible, sensical, possible, and inspirational, and to move that discussion away from um, one of you know fear um, and confusion, uh, which only leads to apathy. Right? It's become we become victims. We become incapable of action. The apathy comes into play. But if if this is happening for us, if it's can be seen as an opportunity, then we can really co-create the future that we want together um, and start to accelerate these solutions at global scale. And the great thing about this system shift um, that, that, uh, that we want to see to solve this problem statement of global warming is that when we do so, we're actually shifting an entire system, the system in which we do business. Um, we currently do business with, with a system that is exploitative and, and extractive. That's the way we have been doing business. But by implementing um, drawdown solutions as a system change, we shift that to a new normal, a normal that is restorative and regenerative by nature. And when we do so, we start to realize that these solutions to reverse global warming taken in aggregate as a system, we would want these solutions whether or not global warming was a problem. Because they all have cascading benefits to human and planetary well-being. Um, when we think about uh, the solutions at hand, oftentimes their effect on climate is a second or third order benefit. You know, renewable energy is about clean, abundant access to energy for all people. Uh, reduced food waste, plant-rich diets. This is about healthy global populations. Plant uh, family planning, educating girls. My gosh, this is about justice and human rights. And when we think about protecting ecosystems, it protects biodiversity and the oxygen that we breathe. When we think about you know, regenerative agriculture or multi-strata agroforestry or tree intercropping, this is about restoring soil, storing carbon to the soil. It's about so health and fertility and benefits to smallholder farmers. So when we take this as a system shift around drawdown, we solve a problem statement, you know, global warming, but we have also addressed so many other challenges that we face as a global economy and a global society. And when taken together, um, we, we, we can envision this shift as, as a new way of, a new normal that is, you know, regenerative, so moving beyond sustainability and towards a new system that is regenerative in nature. Um, and I actually think it is, it is possible. We have the capacity to do this. We already are doing it. These solutions are not, you know, they don't require us to invent or innovate new ways of doing things. They exist. They, they are there. Sure, we need to invest more into their innovation so that we can um, make them more efficient, make them cheaper. Yes, that's, that we do need that. And we need to think of new technologies, new practices that may come online, and when they do so, can speed up and accelerate that process. But 
we have the means to do this, and it's not even going to cost that much. When we look at the entire system shift of all these 80 existing solutions at global scale over 30 years, that's what it would take to get to drawdown. We estimate that it's going to cost an additional $29 trillion. That, that sounds like a lot. That's only a trillion dollars a year, right? And the global GDP is over 80 trillion a year. So it's a fraction of what we're spending anyway, a fraction of the economy. And when we estimate the savings from implementing all of these solutions over 30 years, it's approximately $74 trillion over double the costs. That's a net savings of $44 trillion. Now, these are just numbers, but what this tells us is that we can shift the way we do business to a new normal, solve a cascading array of challenges, reverse global warming, and make profit while we're doing it. It's a win, 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 win. We need to get to the point where we understand that implementing these solutions, there's enough aha, 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 that it simply becomes a duh. It becomes such a normal way we do business that we just don't even think that we should be doing anything else. It just makes that much sense. And that's what Drawdown is all about. I know, Bob, I took a little bit longer than my five minutes, but I apologize for that. Yeah, um, Dad, I love, yeah. I love the ahas turning into a duh. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 That sounds great. And uh, one of the takeaways from earlier discussion with Adam was that um, uh, small scale farming and the mm -hmm. ability to sequester carbon uh, mm -hmm. and how powerful that is just with small scale farming, that one of the solutions you need to add in now is um, that we can eat our way out of climate change. <laughs> I like that. I like that a lot, actually. Um, and it's very true. If we look at, if we look at our, the research shows us that um, the, the most significant uh, solutions that we, set of solutions that um, we can adopt uh, are, have, relate directly to food. That's absolutely correct. Um, you know, eight of the top 20 solutions relate to the food system. The food system as a whole accounts for the vast majority of impact that is a solution set. Um, and what this tells us is the decisions every one of us make every day about the food that we produce, purchase, and consume are the most significant contributions everybody can have every day, everyone can make to reversing global warming. So food is incredibly important. And um, uh, I'm, I'm, glad that Ad, I'm, I'm glad that we got Adam on board that, that one. So I, is, I, I might have the first question here for you. Sure. Um, I've always been um, enamored and amazed with the fact that Drawdown was the first significant major effort to have a solutions focus mm -hmm. to this big problem. Um, it, the book came out about 18 months ago. I know that there was years of homework behind it prior to just when the book came out, but that was, I assume, more or less kind of the official rollout. Uh, for mm -hmm. drawdown. So can you give us an update on how it's been going um, internationally with Drawdown mm -hmm. over that Absolutely. Absolutely. So, Bob, that's, that's great. I mean, what's really important to remember about Drawdown is that at any project, really, that tries to create a tool, uh, and the book is one tool, we have to remember there's other tools that we're creating as well, both to communicate about solutions, but also um, the, the models and the research itself are being formed into a online platform that will be imminently available and open and transparent and allow uh, uh, anybody, uh, decision makers, to access this information and use it in their day-to-day -day decision making. Um, but in order to do that kind of project, you have to continue. You can't be static. You have to uh, uh, be a living, ongoing project because the moment you stop, the moment you become static, um, the, the, the website or the, the, the model becomes archived. The book becomes shelved. It becomes outdated almost as soon as it goes out. So we have to have this constant process of updating with the current and most uh, um, uh, the best available information that are, we are able to bring to these solutions and also understand what are the new solutions? What are the new ways of uh, addressing uh, global warming? And do they, do they, are they relevant at a global scale? If not, are they relevant at regional scale? So the research hasn't stopped. Um, that's really fundamental to remember. It's an ongoing updating and expansion 
of, 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 of the work that we're doing. And it's absolutely essential because 80 solutions are, there are 80 solutions that are at a global scale, but there are many more solutions that are relevant in different contexts, in different regions, in different localities that can get us and move us forward uh, along the pathway towards reversing global warming. But um, so, so it's ongoing, it's living. What's happening around the world? Well, it, you know, we're building this uh, platform. Um, we hope to launch it by 2020. Um, and this platform will be a knowledge commons, uh, a, a place where um, a community-based collaboration around uh, the research data, the stories, the narratives, everything that's, that, that encompasses our knowledge base around solutions can be contributed uh, to this knowledge, uh, knowledge commons. The platform will also allow um, uh, users to extract that information and that knowledge in meaningful and useful and functional ways in their day-to-day -day decision making. And so what we're doing internationally alongside building the technology is building a partnership, a collaborative, a coalition, an ecosystem, if you will, uh, um, of, of, par of partners, actors, organizations, individuals that are actively contributing to that knowledge commons, to the development of the technology, to the population of the knowledge commons with information and knowledge, and um, taking this information and, and using it for their own communication um, and implementation strategies because we feel really strongly at drawdown that project drawdown in Sausalito, cannot California cannot tell the world what to do or how to do it because we don't know we don't live and experience or understand the different contexts of the world we want to unleash drawdown and create a, a create a, a interconnected ecosystem that is self-organized independent um, and, and ultimately create distribute a distribution of leadership and knowledge basis that we can aggregate, collect the best knowledge and use it towards um, implementing solutions. What's happening broadly, um, uh, we, we've, uh, we've launched uh, some uh, Drawdown, Can Drawdown Toronto was launched and I think, I hope Satya and John are going to come online to be able to talk a bit about what's going on with Drawdown Toronto, Drawdown Caledon. Um, they've even launched a night concept of Drawdown Canada as a whole. Um, Drawdown Europe was launched in uh, April of this year, um, which is a collaboration between the German Energy Agency, the European Climate Foundation, and the Climate Knowledge and Innovation Hub uh, communities, Climate Kick. Um, and uh, Drawdown Switzerland will be launched in November. Drawdown Netherlands will be launched in, um, also in November. Um, we have Drawdown Australia that's information, Drawdown India is information. Crystal maybe want to talk a little bit about Drawdown Cameroon, which we just discovered uh, came to fruition uh, not too long ago. Um, and uh, there are other hubs that are forming um, uh, at national, regional, and subnational scales all over the world. And the idea of the hubs here are that it's not a reinvention. It's a re or it's a it's using drawdown as a new organizing principle moving beyond the st stabilization approach moving beyond the uh, targets of 1.5 or 2 degrees maybe even moving in some cases beyond the concept of sustainability again towards regeneration towards a goal uh, of drawdown which is the goal that we want that is not a stopgap measure it's not a pause down the path it's pause down the pathway it's recorrecting the pathway and going towards the place that we want and uh, so these these hubs that are forming as a first instance are saying okay look we're already doing great work in this space now can we redefine what we're doing uh, or reframe what we're doing towards this more ambitious more aspirational and ultimately a goal that we want uh, moving forward um, and uh, and these are these are sparking up all over the world our role at Project Drawdown is to build this platform, to build this platform so that we can interconnect these different communities all over the world as maintainers, uh, contributors, and co-owners of this knowledge commons that we're putting out to the world. This is the complement to the book. The book is a tool to get the, uh, the concept out there and to get the word out there, to get the, the message of Drawdown, the concept there. But the, the platform and the, the hub approach is there to really start to pool that collective impact, collective impact and collaborative knowledge um, together 
um, in a distributed way so that we can start to really move, move, move the needle forward at, at many different scales concurrently without recreating silos or recreating hierarchies. Um, I, I often like to say we don't want to reinvent the wheel. We want to take the wheel off and put it onto a new vehicle. Um, you know, preferably electric vehicle uh, or a green vehicle that's driving through a, a beautiful. <laughs> so um, that, that's kind of where we're at right now. There's lots of that we can talk about in, with particulars of different approaches um, that each each hub is taking because at Drawdown we're not dictating what hubs do because again it has to be self-organized by by you know, ecosystems are by nature self-organizing systems that become interconnected and work towards. Uh, you know, um, common goal of life and, and of, of thriving in that ecosystem. So we do not dictate, say, what hubs do or this hub, but it's really about the formation of the community around the hub itself that dictates how that hub will participate as a member of the coalition, as a member of the community, and ultimately as a member of that platform. So I take it that um, I've just got one last question and I want to open it up to everyone else. Um, it sounds like from what you just said, the hubs that are forming and already formed around the world that, as you said, self-organizing. So uh, does that mean they're all functioning or intending to function in slightly different ways? To a certain extent, yes. Um, to a certain extent. Not, not every hub. Certain hubs are working directly with Project Drawdown to be what, I, what we're calling maintainers or stewards of the regional uh, models, the regionalization of, of our approach. So, for example, um, next week I'm uh, going to be visiting our, our uh, lead partners at Penn State, Pennsylvania State University, who are taking on the role to lead the Drawdown USA hub. That's a regional, we see it as a regional hub that will coordinate efforts um, across Drawdown Georgia, Drawdown MIT, which is forming, Drawdown uh, the um, uh, Drawdown Northwest, uh, which is forming, um, and other other hubs that are that are forming in the U.S. will be coordinated um, uh, in collaboration, independent, of course, everything being independent. But the role of the Drawdown USA or the Drawdown Europe or the Drawdown India hub, for example, will be to actually help maintain the platform and research and and and, and the knowledge commons that uh, as a as a core maintainer and steward of that approach. Other hubs like Drawdown Switzerland, Drawdown, perhaps Drawdown Nova Scotia, perhaps Drawdown Toronto, they are really self-organized and different. Um, you know, uh, Drawdown Switzerland set out to be, to turn, to try to make Geneva, the, or Switzerland, the center of sustainable finance and sustainable business using Drawdown as an organizing principle. So their aim is to really address the capital, you know, investment in capital markets to shift the flows of capital towards solutions. Um, Drawdown Netherlands is looking at a slightly different approach. Drawdown Toronto is looking a lot more at community engagement. Um, and so, so yes, different types of hubs will have different roles um, depending on what their constituents and, and uh, partner organizations as they come together define and kind of see as their place um, and what they want to do. Um, and then there will be, of course, these um, broader regional hubs that are, that are going to be working directly with the uh, Drawdown model platform. Uh, and con in contributing to the to the uh, development and ultimately maintenance and stewardship of the knowledge commons. Okay, thank you. Um, I want to open it up to anybody in the room um, has any questions. And please speak up so that it's got to get picked up by my laptop microphone. So you got to talk very loudly and I think it'll work. Hi, um, I'm Vivian. I just wondered if you were familiar with Transition Towns that came, the movement that came out of Britain. Um, transition Towns were communities that mm -hmm. got together and they were doing a kind of drawdown in energy and whether you had some links with that movement. Yeah, the, the Transition Town movement worldwide and, and any links you have there? Um, we do have connections with some of the folks who've been working with transition towns. Um, we've had uh, several over, over the port course of the year. We don't have any official partnership with them currently, um, but uh, yes, we, we are very familiar with the approach and um, there's been a lot of discussion about how to integrate the concept of drawdown within 
uh, transition towns model. Um, but uh, I have yet to be really, I haven't dived into it with them yet. That, um, might, I, okay. that might be a good area. Of Crystal? Uh, go ahead, Crystal. Well, um, while we're on a similar topic, I thought I'd share a little bit just of what we're seeing with um, local jurisdictions in the U.S., towns and cities, um, who have who are looking to adopt a drawdown framework for their work, even if it's not directly in partnership with us. So we've heard from um, several counties and towns in the U.S. who are updating their climate action plans or their local government plans around climate and are looking to incorporate a drawdown approach. So one of the best examples of that I wanted to give you is the city of Cincinnati um, in the state of Ohio in the U.S. because they have had for many years um, what they call the Green Cincinnati Plan, but in their 2018 update, they specifically used a drawdown model. So looking at a broad range of, range of solutions and um, choosing uh, a set of solutions in various um, sectors um, according to their, um, they looked at several, um, several factors in choosing the solutions. Their potential to reduce greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, just like Project Drawdown. They did a cost benefit analysis on, analysis on the solutions. They looked at the feasibility of implementing them. And in order to, uh, they, start, they also started with a, a very broad and collaborative approach, which is something that we also, um, is part of our mission. Um, so they, in every, they went to every community, every neighborhood in the city to seek recommendations for solutions. So they engaged the entire com community. Um, they gathered 1,400 recommendations, and then they evaluated which ones to include in the plan based on their emissions reduction potential, cost benefit, feasibility. And, um, and they, they wound up with a set of 80 solutions that they went forward with and included in their plan. Another thing they did was recognize Chad mentioned earlier that each of the solutions has co-benefits, reasons that we would implement the solution even if there were no climate issue to be concerned about. And Cincinnati rec recognized that. So part of their analysis was what are the co-benefits of each solution that they were considering. And not only that, they also built in a social justice and um, equity aspect to each solution. So not only are they going to be reducing emissions, but they're going to be improving life for every citizen in Cincinnati. So I wanted to give, let me give you a few examples of some of the goals of the plan. So 100% of city residents have access to healthy, affordable foods is one. Have a park within a 10 minute walk of every city resident a 50% decrease in childhood asthma-related hospital admissions. Now, these are the sort of goals that any city would want because it improves the lives of their citizens. And it also happens that it's going to help work toward drawdown at the same time. So um, I, I think that the city of Cincinnati plan is one of the best that I've seen. And it really, I think, illustrates um, all of the benefits of the drawdown approach. That's great. Um, thank you for that. Um, and it, is that available on your website anywhere or? It, um, no, but it is available on the city of Cincinnati's website. Aha, uh -huh. okay. So I can, I, can, I can provide you with um, a link um, to that and the full plan is downloadable on their website. Yeah, if you could send a link, that would be great. I think we'd be curious to look at the 80 things that they finally came up with. Mm -hmm. Sure, because they were very specific to the, to their, the Cincinnati community. Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and also at the same time, there's the element of measuring. So measuring their current, um, current emissions and also measuring... Um, 
the reductions that they'll be able to realize. Okay, um, Gregory's got a, uh, a question. Crystal, thank you. Chad, it's Gregory Hemming, nice to see you. Hi, Greg. Hi, Greg. Um, I, I wanted to try and stri streamline a thought that I had, and you know, it, it's been a couple of years ago while we were planning the first uh, thinkers retreat that you, you and I connected, and you and I connected because Paul Hawken and I connected on, on several discussions. And it took me a long time to try and understand Drawdown in my role in it. Because in the conversations I would have with Paul, I kept trying to get Paul to tell me what, what Drawdown is. I kept saying, Paul, I, I don't quite get it. Tell me what Drawdown is. And finally, he, re he really made it simple for me. He says, Gregory, he says, you're Drawdown. And, and I got to think, I, I really am. I mean, because of, uh, because of uh, me as an individual, me doing what I do, and other people doing what they do, we're all, in a sense, drawdown. And, and we're going to come up with different solutions, different place-based solutions, uh, that, that may or may not tie into the big drawdown picture. But as long as people are really concerned about trying to reach this drawdown, then, then we all are drawdown. And so when I started to think of it in that way, I started to be able to see my role as, as a human being and my role as a municipal counselor to, to move ahead with, with drawdown. And we did it as a, as a county by having different targets. Um, but that, I, that's all I wanted to say. It took me a long time to figure out that, that really I am drawdown. And, uh, and Bob Cervelli is, is drawdown, and uh, Joan Baxter is drawdown. We're all in. Mm -hmm. So that's all I wanted to say. But it's nice to see you again. <laughs> so I, I get the feeling maybe we all need to, we, you guys need to come out with a button that says, I am drawdown. It's <laughs> <laughs> a great idea. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's a good idea. I like it. <laughs> And I see uh, Satya, is that you? Have you been able to join in? I am, I'm here. I've got my video off because the internet isn't too good, but yeah, I was on another call and was able to jump on it for there. Okay, no, that's great Satya. And yeah, your video off is probably a good idea because we're right on the cusp of having a stable connection here. It's working well, but we get a couple of warning signs every once in a while. Um, so it, it's good, um, and I think Chad had mentioned Satya is one of the two people in the Toronto area that have been working very closely with Drawdown. They've already started to convene meetings, uh, regular meetings, uh, to start discussions around Drawdown. Uh, Satya, maybe if you could take a couple of minutes and just describe what you're doing in the Toronto area. Uh, yeah, so um, we. Uh, launched Drawdown in a local community just north of Toronto with a in a population of about between 50 and 60,000 people um, and what that means is we took a, a program that was developed by the Pachamama Alliance an introduction and a course and uh, led a few intros um, well several intros and then some courses and what came out of the courses seemed to be uh, pretty amazing. The, the enthusiasm and it's turned into a group of people that um, because that area is very food, foodie, lots of farmers and agriculture, uh, their project is to create a, um, a clean, smart food certification program that is going to be covering uh, a large agricultural uh, section of southern Ontario. So starting in the small community that they are, they've already gotten into conversations with other counties and um, areas in the southern Ontario area. So that that's kind of what happened there. And a local organization, and this is what we were explaining to to Bob and Josie um, that we're a part of called Eco Caledon took Drawdown on as a bolt-on project. 
and um, they were really enrolled and taken by the, the whole concept because they had attended the intro and taken the course. And they now, their, their biggest project is actually creating a drawdown directory. So um, the community can relate to the services, whether you know, they're individuals, companies, institutions, um, in a way that it relates to drawdown and its um, sectors. So that's really exciting. Um, and what's in it for them is they've got all kinds of other projects that then can be connected and, and create relevance through uh, the drawdown framework. Um, so that happened and then we moved to Toronto and decided uh, to create a 13-month plan to roll out Drawdown Toronto and that was basically a combination over a 13-month period of introductions and what we called sector summits that covered each of the um, sectors uh, on a monthly basis and we have done four five, four, and we've got three left. And uh, that's basically bringing in panel experts and having conversations and then doing breakout groups and allowing people to really connect with um, how they as individuals and then as a group, if they want to, can have uh, an impact and actually get into action. And I just got off a call, um, actually that was the call I was on, uh, for the women and girls sector summit and and one of the interesting things which uh, we're noticing is how to tie this particular sector into um, the local community because it's it's not as clear-cut as you know energy and building in cities but it is a challenge to say, you know, how what's actually happening locally? Is there something, or how do we relate it to international? So we're we're kind of a little bit in a um, an exploratory conversation of how to take what's internationally happening and have it um, not just be an informative thing, but help people really um, find a way that they can get get involved. So we've got our, our All Sector Summit happening in February. Well, actually, we might be pushing that out to April now, uh, where it's basically the theme is, is to celebrate all of the sectors and you know, sort of network and bring people as a launch pad to, I think, something like what Cincinnati is doing, where they, we can then now look at, okay, you know, which solutions are really hot and relevant to Toronto and um, and set kind of those kind of goals or statements um, that Cincinnati's done. Well, that's great. Thank you, Satya. Um, yeah. And we've enjoyed our conversations and I think we're gonna continue to keep talking with you. Yeah. Oh, and just one, just one other comment. What happened out of all of that is we've now created a drawdown uh, core team of about um, 20 active people that are now really um, mobilizing Drawdown Toronto as, a, as an initiative and are in that, those conversations of what did we want that to look like? <laughs> And, um, you know, John and I are looking at this possibility of a Drawdown Canada sort of framework that we've talked to Chad about a couple of times. And it's, you know, seems to be coming up uh, more recently as uh, maybe a timely thing to have another conversation around, um, particularly with um, Atlantic Canada now. Uh, and there's a little interest in Vancouver. So that's, that's popping up recently okay we're, we're definitely going to have to keep talking um john you had a question oh this isn't so much a question so so john eaton in the back of the room oh sasha say hi to john for me hi john <laughs> i can see your head there <laughs> hello <laughs> weirdly i know john love okay Oh. I know he's been, he, they both have been to Berkeley, I think. Well, great. Uh, 
but I've known her for a long, long time uh, from California. Okay, very good. Oh, nice. The small world. <laughs> I'll let him know. Does Does he know that you know him? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> I'll let him know. <laughs> well, I'm sure there will be many more conversations. So John, John's got a question. So I'm wondering if uh, the, uh, uh, if anyone can talk about the recent climate summit in San Francisco and any, whether or not there were any uh, positive takeaways from your point of view. Positive takeaways from my point of view is that there was such a broad range of um, engagement around solutions, even, not, even if it's not framed um, according to drawdown. But um, what I thought was most inspirational was the number of um, commitments made by different organizations or coalitions of collaborations of organizations who were committing to some sort of action or um, goals um, in their in their sector. I found I found that to be the most inspiring. So um, just to add to that, um, so at the, we started off this meeting talking about how we're all doomed, it's our fault, and there's nothing we can do about it. Well, there's many, many people and organizations around the world who are going to proceed with doing something about it, even if it's hopeless, <laughs> you know, who are committed to taking action. So if we're going to all um, perish because of global warming, we're going to go down working towards solutions. <laughs> you bet. Woo Absolutely. We're, so that's how I we're going out. We're in it. But <laughs> I'm in for that. I, uh, I, my, my takeaways from GCAS, I would agree with Crystal a lot with that. I think I, I thought with GCAS, what, what, what the takeaways were that notion, I, I wouldn't quite say precisely that we're all good. If we're going out, we're, we're going to go out like that. But I got actually a lot of hope. I wasn't, didn't feel hopeless any longer. I felt through the GCAS and I was just here in New York for the, for the UN week and for the New York climate week. And what I, what I really am starting to see more and more and more is this breaking down of the silos that I think have stymied progress uh, for decades and really starting to shift the, the language away from, and I, I don't know if Drawdown had any influence on this whatsoever. Uh, it could be just a coincidence, of course, but like shifting the language really away from the problem and from the hopelessness and from, you know, uh, the, the, the fear, um, to really solutions, solutions, solutions. I hear solutions across the board everywhere I go now. And I, I tell you five years ago, I didn't hear that even close to the same amount. And I hear drawdown a lot too. I hear reversing global warming a lot. I hear people not talking about climate change, but talking about global warming, solving the problem. You know, and I hear about a lot of the co-benefits. These are things that, you know, uh, I think show a transformation or at least a starting point where we can we can get there work together um, and I think uh, I think it was Crystal's absolutely right where we're it's not necessarily about reinvention it's about really realizing what we're doing is part of a, a contribution to a whole different system and we're all interconnected and by, if we can start breaking down those silos and working collaboratively towards a common goal then I then I think we can actually get there and that's what I really took from GCAS and from uh, from the New York Climate Week is that we're all in it together, um, and we're not going to go out. We're not going to go out. Actually, we're we're going to start solving this, and it's no longer about defining the problem. It's about defining the solutions. And I think uh, uh, I think that's what I took away from the past couple of weeks. I just I just have to you know one of the the big things that we sort of the spirit of what what we step into when we talk to people, whether it's in intros or courses, is this, this invitation, like you said, Chad, to move from a place of hopelessness to hope. Mm -hmm. And 
it's really that that's really what people are looking for um you know that that is the purpose of the intro is to just have people ha experience that shift because what we have noticed is as soon as that happens there's a completely different human being in front of you they mm -hmm. they they literally transform in front of you and and, and you can see it happen, you know, when you're talking and then when Paul Hawken, you know, the video comes on and, and they move from that space in that short a period of time, not just from hopelessness to hope, but then into what can I do? And one of the things that we really um, bring to each, each space is two words, is fun and sustainability. So we, our motto is, is whatever we're doing with this, we're having fun and we're making sure that it's completely sustainable as far as how we're showing up. You know, if we're going to advocate for sustainability, we want to make sure it's sustainable for us. It works for us. We're not burnt out. We're not complaining. We're doing it. We're doing something because it really truly nourishes us. So I just want one more thing. We have four words that we tell people to remember when we do our 20 minute um, talk about this is yes, 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 and yay. And it's, we get them to say it, you know, it's like, okay, what's the first word? Yes, <laughs> we have the solutions. Or yes, we can reverse global warming. Second word is yes, we have the solutions. Third word is yes, we're already doing them. And yay, let's celebrate and do more. So, you know, we really uh, bring that energy into the space um, that, that shifts the whole conversation um, and, and how, how people move from that place. All right, I love that. Thank you, Satya. So um, one thing, uh, Crystal or Chad, um, we noticed an email came out. Uh, Paul Hawken, he's now your, don't re quite remember, the chief inspirer, something like that. <laughs> and you've got a new um, executive director. Yes. And I, I forgive me, the name escapes me. Um, so how is that shift going? He will... Um be coming on board on Monday. So we'll welcome him on Monday. His name is Jonathan Foley. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Jonathan is one of the, uh, I would say one of the world's preeminent scientists, environmental scientists. Um, and uh, he uh, uh, was the former executive director of the California Academy of Sciences, which is, I believe, the most widely attended uh, or, 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 or uh, um, attended um, natural history museum in the world. And John, I, I was just, as a, if I can give a little anecdote about John, I think, I think you guys might appreciate this. Um, I met him um, once at a tour of the Academy of Sciences that he was running. And first of all, the idea that an executive director of a, a museum can go through and give a tour as good as any tour guide, every piece of that museum, he knew like the back of his hand and he knew the science behind it all, which was just astounding for anybody to do period. Um, and unusual, I would say for an ED to be able to do all that, to do that um, with the kind of work that they're doing at that institution. But even more importantly, I, what I was really impressed with, with John is that he would walk, as he was walking through um, uh, giving the tour, all the docents, all the volunteer docents who were around to, to, to supervise the, the academy, he stopped and said hello to each of them, knew them by name, and had a conversation with them. He's just that kind of character that is in, immensely approachable, incredibly intelligent, and um, really is like a, a great, great, we think it's just a, we think it's a, oh, it's a coup. We've really brought somebody on board who's going to take, draw down even further than we thought possible. Um, and we're just really happy to have him here and, uh, and to keep Paul Hawking around because he's not going anywhere. Paul's still there. <laughs> so you get the best of all worlds. That's great. Yeah. Very good. So uh, Lil McPherson's got a question. I'm gonna turn the microphone and I need to get out of the way as well to be able to do that. Or turn the camera, I should say. 
Lots are all down, by the way. I'm a food restaurateur and uh, very involved with food sequestration and farming and all that. That's my box. But also being a restaurateur and really inspired by Paul Hawkins and Drawdown. You guys are amazing. Uh, which led me to pick up the book, that one of my favorite books by Ray Anderson, uh, the, uh, the uh, radical industrialist uh, book, which is amazing for me to read. I'm a restaurant person, you know. And he made me think about waste. So I'm always trying to get really creative on how, do, is there a place that we can, for industry, um, to bring solutions? I, I came up with one, kind of an odd one. I'm sitting in my restaurant trying to think, you know, how else can I affect change? And I love the fact that, that if we do small things together, they're big. So I thought, what, what does industry do small things together that's big, that, that we can, that's a behavior change? So I looked at water. So for restaurants, all restaurants in North America bring one glass of water over to the table. It takes three glasses of water to put that one glass of water in front of you. Believe it or not, three glasses to one. Why? Because you have to wash it and sanitize it and everything. So I started doing the math. So that works out, and I'm just being really uh, soft here. We might for probably at least for about 60 glasses a day. I'm saying probably 100, but I'll say 60, which works out to a restaurant to throw out just one. 64,800 glasses, eight ounce glasses of water a year. And I didn't even bring in the fact that that's treated water and treated back out. So a lot of energy, a lot of our resources just from the behavior. So I started, I challenged a bunch of restaurants and put little cards now and just put water for requests only. So is there places, uh, you know, uh, I like doing things internal myself, but I love the fact that how can I challenge more restaurants? There's, I guess there's a movie star in the States that says the same thing. He's like, don't bring me water, not less uh, I need it. So it's really 64,000 glasses of water just from my one restaurant. Yeah. But that, I love that example. It's, it's such a wonderful example. Um, you don't need to wait for permission from your national government, your local government, some other organization, someone else to take action. You know, there's something that we all can contribute. And you've, you've used your own expertise in your own industry and your own creativity. And um, that's, I find that really inspiring. Um, the other thing I want to point out about that is it's really an opportunity for um, you to inspire others because um, what you're doing is so much more inspiring than, than berating people or telling them how much of a part of the problem there is. On the other hand, you could tell people, this is the impact I'm having. You know, this is how I'm part of the solution. I'm not getting a glass of water. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, I, there's always a way, I think, to reframe the message and the actions to be inspiring and uh, part of possibility and um, you know something everyone can contribute we, we we tell people drink as much as you want just ask for it and, and we have the little cards mm -hmm. on the table and we have not had any mm -hmm. anybody say anything bad everybody's like oh wow that's yeah <laughs> that's another another um great example because what we say is that um you know, solving global warming, it doesn't have to be about deprivation, about having a less than full and abundant life. You know, like it's more, it's a pathway to a more full and abundant life. Cool. So bravo, I, I love that story. <laughs> Is there a place we can put that on now, draw it down? Is there like three? <laughs> Is this, you mean like to add another solution to? Well, yeah, is there a place where we can bring our ideas to draw down as it like put it on it for industry? Like maybe restaurants can look up what are restaurants doing? You know, like is there some, some uh, you know, way that we can add that to draw down or is that there or? Well, we don't have like a public um, forum for that in place yet. That's what we envision and some of what Chad was talking about. Um, with the platform that we want to develop, but in the interim, I would say to just send it, email it to us because we are collecting these stories and examples. And yeah, we'd love to have the opportunity to share them and we mm -hmm. rejoice when we get these sort of stories and examples. Uh, Chad, this is Kathy Eaton and last year one of the students at the high school asked you, would it be better to buy a new hybrid 
or by a used car. And I asked you what answer you gave him, and you said you thought about it, and then you said a uh, buy a new hybrid. So I just wanted you to know that after my car was 19 years old, I bought a used hybrid. So I win. <laughs> you did double. You know? <laughs> That's fantastic, Kathy. That's great. <laughs> it's like a double whammy. You get it. You, you, it's a used hybrid. That's wonderful. <laughs> Oh, that's good. Well, any last questions, comments? Is there going to be a pug wash drawn down? I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> Paul. Yeah. yeah, Paul Strong here from uh, Davis Suzuki Foundation and the Council of Canadians. I'm just wondering how important do you think uh, bringing uh, like-minded organizations together on this issue is, and uh, what degree of importance do you put to that? I, I would say it is, without a doubt, in my mind, the one of the most fundamentally important things to be doing. Um, we often talk about top-down approaches or bottom-up approaches, and we need these. These are incredibly important. You know, taxation, regulation, policy mechanisms, financial mechanisms from the top-down decision makers, it's important in, in many capacities. It, bottom up is incredibly important because we all have an individual role to play. Um, everything that we do has some kind of contribution to energy and emissions um, and to uh, all the other cascading benefits that come with these other types of solutions so we can make choices on an individual scale. But it's really, I think, often the middle out uh, that is really fundamental for institutional change, for that shift in um, the way we actually do business. And that's organizations that are businesses and companies. That's organizations that are educational institutions. That's, um, that's nonprofit organizations. That's communities. That's municipalities. That's different scales that are, that are of, of the, that is the, not the individual and not the top-down regulation, but the concept of the we. We need to be doing this together. And I think um, bringing like-minded organizations together, what that does is it reinforces the concept that we don't need to reinvent things. We need to just break those silos because we are working towards common missions. We are working together, and we need a multiplicity of approaches. There's no, there's no one to say... Uh, you know that my way of doing it's the best way or my organization is the right way to do it and your organization is doing it something differently and that's not the right way actually we could learn from each other we can create a way of shared learning co-creation and ultimately feedback that we as a system can thrive and that I think is absolutely fundamental to to uh, uh, solving a global challenge like global warming like food insecurity like uh, economic inequality like gender inequality like if we go through these lists of challenges that we face off really at, at, at global scales, we need to have the breaking down of silos and working together with like-minded organizations to create that institutional change from the middle out. But of course, bottom-up and top-down approaches are also incredibly important because we all have an individual role to be playing. Okay, my follow-up question is, uh, do you have room for another employee? <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, do we have room? We have, we have let lots of room for in-kind support of employees. Um, we always love, and, and actually, one, I, one of the things I think is a hallmark of Project Drawdown is we punch well above our weight because we're a very tiny, we're a small organization where, you know, we do, we do a lot uh, in a lot of different areas as we can, but we also um, have some kind of capacity to bring in the energy, enthusiasm, expertise, knowledge, intellect, passion, heart of so many people and organizations that come to us and say, I want to take part in this and I'm going to do this. Here's my contribution to Project Drawdown, but here's also my contribution to um, the broader uh, uh, implementation of solutions. Um, and, and, and it's just, it's, it's really astounding me sometimes. We just had a hackathon uh, for example, three weeks ago, which is part of developing this platform that I was talking about. And we had a group of brilliant, absolutely brilliant programmers and coder coders from all over the country come and congregate 
to San Francisco and spend two full days and nights because apparently, I didn't know this about coders, but apparently coders spend, they don't stop. You know, they, they work eight hours a day and they keep coding until midnight. So they were working practically 24 hours for two days and they were doing it for free. And these are, these are senior software engineers at Google who are giving up their time to, to, to work this. So that was my way of, you know, I'm really, so it makes us so grateful that we can, we can, we can bring these people together. Um, and that's also my way of, of uh, deviating from answering that question fully. Um. <laughs> okay, my follow-up to that is, oh. <laughs> is, when's the first course for CEOs and top executives coming out for Drawdown? I'm looking for a job. Well, I kind of got that impression, which is, <laughs> um, Crystal can answer that one. Uh, one do we have that one? A course for CEOs? But do you mean like a uh, workforce uh, development training for CEOs or something like this? Exactly. Like if we know about drawdown, so should they, you know? Well, you know, there's, you know, over 200 companies are interested in uh, uh, using Drawdown as a new organizing pr principle uh, as a form of corporate sustainability. Um, and uh, so there's a lot of action, a lot of interest amongst businesses and CEOs to, um, and some of these include some very, very large corporations. Um, you know, so there's def definitely interest there. And Chris, I don't know if she had, for, I don't know what the status is, but there is this concept called Drawdown Learn, which is, um, you know, about curriculum development and training and, and, and knowledge sharing around these solutions for teachers, educators, um, uh, but also in the sense of workforce development. It's, it's not being done by Project Drawdown, though. It's really being done by the ecosystem of partners that are, that are coming up and, and saying and taking it on themselves. So it's, it's information, and I think I hope uh, Crystal maybe can speak more to it. Well, we, I, I can't say that we have a, like a formal training in place for CEOs. It's an excellent suggestion. Maybe you do have a job at Project Drawdown. <laughs> that's, that's something um, definitely worth exploring. I, I know there's been interest from many CEOs, and we're looking forward to the day when a major corporation will announce its Drawdown initiative. So. Um, yeah, we, that's certainly something that um, we would love to develop in the future, but have not um, to date. And um, we do get, I think in our conversations, there's a lot of discussion about engaging the business community. So um, it's certainly not something we've ignored, but um, we don't yet have, a, let's say, a formal initiative to um, do outreach to CEOs so maybe we should be talking with you <laughs> well um, Chad Crystal we promised about an hour um, and we're a little bit over but I wanted to say if any last question comment I have one question okay I wondered how many languages is drawdown available in um, so that it reaches people in Southeast Asia, for example, and in Africa. And I'm really intrigued by Drawdown Cameroon. If you could just speak for a couple of minutes about how that started. Sure. This is uh, Joan Baxter asking the question. And Joan, you worked a lot in Africa. So. I've lived in Cameroon. I've lived in many countries. Okay, very good. Okay, wonderful. So, um, hi, Joan. Um, as far as the foreign languages, uh, versions have been already printed um, and released in French and Portuguese. And um, a German translation is in the works. Um, a, there's been commitment for Chinese translation and I believe Vietnamese. And that's what's on board. There's, I've gotten, had inquiries about people interested in Japanese and um, and also Spanish translations. But there's a, so as far as translating the book, there, because of uh, agreements with the publishers, there has to be a formal arrangement to do that um, through the publisher. 
So we don't have full control over uh, translations that, that happen. And then as far as Cameroon, um, the way that came about was um, we got an inquiry from uh, an NGO in Cameroon called Community Green Engagement. And um, I just engaged, have engaged in discussions with them and um, offered the possibility of maybe a drop. Well, um, Community and Green Engagement is located in Bamenda. And so they were, um, had discovered drawdown through our website and were very interested. So I provided more information, um, got them a copy of the book drawdown and they were totally enthusiastic about, um, you know, uh, implementing the drawdown um, framework in Cameroon. So they have been uh, engaging with, um, local government officials, um, schools, and other NGOs to get everyone signed on to this notion of a, a drawdown in Cameroon and, um, and are moving forward with it at a rapid clip. <laughs> okay, um, anyone else last? Chad, I think you might have to go. I'm not sure. I have to run, I'm afraid. Um, but it's been a pleasure uh, seeing you all again. Um, and I wish you all the best of luck on uh, the rest of the, the workshop today and uh, tomorrow. Um, it was such a pleasure to be there last year. And uh, I'm so happy to see that this is continuing. And if there's anything else that we can do to help uh, you, all, please reach out. Uh, and believe me, we will. And so Chad, Crystal, Satya, I'm glad the technology worked. It's the next best thing to having you here. <laughs> yeah, thank you for having me. <laughs>